Hey, you want to dramatically increase the performance of your bike and harness the power? The best way you can do that is to switch from the semi-automatic factory clutch to the manual clutch. It's not a difficult job. With a little bit of patience, you can knock it out. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Hey guys, it's Brian. I am back in the garage again today with a killer project. We are converting our pit bike from a semi-automatic clutch to a fully manual clutch. And this is not a very difficult job and can be done in about two or three hours if you're patient and you kind of plan ahead. The kit that I have was supplied by T-Bolt USA, my fantastic partners on this project. And as I've said before, they are absolutely fantastic to deal with. You should definitely look them up if you've got any kind of cool pit bike project, like suspension related, engine related, electrical related, I mean, anything that you want. So check them out on the web at tboltusa.com. Super fantastic people to deal with. So a couple other small things uh, to tell you that you may see some recycle videos in this because I've filmed it while I was actually building the motor and then some of it I actually filmed while I was uh, tearing the motor apart. So you may see some recycled clips in there, but it won't diminish anything in terms of the uh, educational value of what you're about to see. And one other thing too, there's a special part that you're gonna need for this. This is a clutch nut removal tool and I'll have a link for this in the description down below. So that's really it. I'm ready to get to work if you are. So let's pick up some tools and go to work. Start by loosening the oil drain bolt and draining the oil. And make sure you're not removing this cam chain tensioner plug bolt. You'll know if you remove the wrong bolt if this happens. And if you did remove the wrong bolt, watch this video here. Remove the kickstart pedal by removing this pinch bolt. Then drive a wedge such as a screwdriver tip into the exposed gap to relieve the compression on the splined end of the kickstart spindle and remove it. Next, remove the foot peg bar, which is a little hard to show with the bike on the stand, but you can see the bolts here. Next, remove the eight right side crankcase cover bolts. With the cover removed, remove the ball retainer and the spring behind. And next is a little spring and oil through assembly. Now you can remove this spline lifter lever and the lifter cam plate. Now we're ready to remove the outer clutch cover, which is held on with four number three Phillips head screws. To remove the lock nut holding the clutch onto the crankshaft, you have to bend out this little interference tab from the notch in the lock nut. So now it's time to remove the nut holding the clutch. If you don't have a clutch holder like this, you can wedge a flange nut between the drive and driven gear like this. Do not use an impact driver to drive out this nut. Cranks are press fitted together and using an impact driver can throw them out of alignment so do not use an impact driver. Remove the cone shaped lock washer and the castellated 14 millimeter lock washer behind. Then pull off the clutch. Alright so now is a good time to remove the gasket. Now with the clutch off remove this driven gear snap ring then remove the primary drive gear and the dimple clutch center guide from the crankshaft. Now you can remove the larger driven gear. With that out of the way you have enough clearance to remove the step collar. Now you're ready to remove the gear selector components starting with the stopper arm assembly bolt. There's a spring behind this so don't lose track of that spring. Next is the shift cam plate bolt and if you can remove the gear shift spindle without removing this bolt feel free just to leave it alone. As you'll see in a second I was able to install the new gear shift spindle with the shift cam plate in place. Then depress the gear shift arm and remove the gear shift spindle. If you remove the shift cam plate note the alignment of this proud pin and the recess in the plate. You have to align those. Install the bolt and torque it to 17 newton meters or 12 foot pounds. When you install the new supplied gear shift spindle note that these return spring arms straddle this pin. Insert the spindle, then depress the gear shift arm and guide it under the shift cam plate. Next, install the stopper arm and make sure the spring is oriented like you see here. Tighten it down and align the roller into the shift cam plate, then torque it down to 13 newton meters or 9 foot pounds. Now, install the larger driven gear and the always tricky retaining ring. 
Make sure that it's fully seated into the groove. Next, install the stepped collar, and the smaller outside diameter of this collar should face you. Next, install the dimpled clutch center guide, then the primary drive gear. Make sure the relieved edge you see here is facing you or the clutch will not seat correctly. Align the splines of the clutch with the splines on the crank and seat the clutch. Make sure that the teeth on the primary drive gear are aligned with the lands on the back side of the clutch assembly like this or the clutch will not seat correctly. Next, install the castellated lock washer. The back side of this has some tabs that have to be aligned in the splines just like the clutch hub. Now this little guy I wanted to show you under a magnifying glass. It's a beveled lock washer and the word outside needs to face you when it's installed. Lastly, install this notch lock nut. Then just as we did when we were removing the semi-automatic clutch, if you don't have a clutch holder, it's perfectly fine to wedge a flange nut to create an interference fit between these two gears. Tighten the lock nut to at least 42 newton meters, and you may have to tighten it just a little bit more to get the notch in the lock nut to align with the tab on the lock washer so you can bend up the tab like this. All right, so we're getting close to the end now. Using a new gasket, install the clutch outer cover and tighten the four number three Phillips head screws. Install the oil passage bushing. Then install the spring inside the oil through and insert the assembly into the sleeve. Switching to the right side crankcase cover, install the clutch actuator and slapping a little bit of grease on the back of this thing will hold it in place better. If by chance you accidentally remove the dowel pins when you remove the crankcase cover earlier, coat both of them with some anti-seize and install them. Install the supplied new gasket and align it over the dowel pins. Finally, grease the inside lip of the shifter spindle seal and install the right side crankcase cover by aligning it with the shifter spindle and pressing it home. By the way, it can take a little finagling to get this thing to seat over the dowel pins. All right, just a few more steps. So install the eight bolts that hold the right crankcase cover and tighten those down to four newton meters or 3.3 foot pounds. and screw in the oil fill plug. All right, so now you can adjust the clutch preload. So with the outer lock nut loosened, turn the preload adjuster screw in until it seats. Then tighten the lock nut. All right, so finally you're ready to install the last part, the clutch adjuster cover. Install the supplied new gasket. Then tighten the two retaining screws and you are done. All right, so we're done with that job. Not too difficult, about two or three hours worth of work, something like that. So add oil and put the foot pegs back on and you are ready to rock. So in a couple of weeks, we're gonna have a new video coming out on this bike, which is gonna be the long travel suspension made by Piranha, which was also supplied by the cool guys over at T-Bolt USA. This thing completely transforms the look of this bike and also, of course, the performance. It's a big upgrade. So something that you guys might wanna consider also if you're gonna be tricking out your Mini like we've been doing on this CRF70 project. So on that note, if you wanna follow along with this project, we're getting really close to the end, but if you're enjoying this series, we're getting pretty close to the end. You can still jump on here by subscribing and liking the channel, which of course I always appreciate. And on that note, I also wanna say thank you so much to everybody who takes the time to watch these videos. I really enjoy doing them. You guys are fantastic. People have been so kind and left me some nice comments and sometimes some not so nice comments. But if you leave me a nice comment, I will reply. I'm replying to all the comments that I get on this channel. So thank you so much again for watching and see you in a couple weeks. In the meantime, have fun in your garage.